call the meeting to order. And I'll ask the staff to do a roll call vote. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, we're we're while well, we're waiting on everybody to get assembled, and welcome. And what we're going to do after we do the roll call, we're going to go back down, and everybody's going to introduce themselves because we got some <laughs> some new names here. Uh -oh. Ruben's here. Okay, Ruben's so here. Ruben just walked in. Um, oh, Jesus Christ! Okay, can we do a roll? We need to we need to get the meeting rolling, and we need to do a roll call vote. And uh, tell me who is on the dais tonight. Um, we're going to have Manny sit over here, and we'll have the two alternates sit. That's fine. And I can start roll call. Okay. All right. Member Alexander? Member Gonzalez? Member Locke? Member Munoz? Here. Member Strozik? Here. Secretary Dr. Pfeiffer? Chair Northey? Here. Alternate Amoroso? Here. Alternate Burke? Here. And alternate Rodriguez? Here. I guess I missed my name. I apologize. Oh, it was the first time I called. I'm so sorry. I did. Yeah. Sorry. Here. <laughs> okay. So we're going to go ahead and approve the minutes, and then we'll go ahead and, and under presentations and awards and reports, we're going to reintroduce ourselves so everybody knows who is who. Um, I'll, uh, has everybody read the minutes, had an opportunity to review them? Are there any corrections or changes to the minutes as they are prepared? If not, we will, f we will consider them approved and filed for, um, f for history. Okay, um, presentation awards and reports. M Mr. Paradise, could you clarify why we do not have, a, have legal staff here tonight? Uh, yes. Uh, our attorney has, uh, how shall I say, had stayed out late two nights in a row, and I gave her the day off. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So we've got a lot of new faces on the dais, and um, the count, excuse me, the commission made some appointments and adjustments on Monday night. Um, and I'm going to let Ron explain those in a few minutes, but we're going to start down this way. And Mr. Munez, would you just, for everybody on the dais, introduce yourself to everybody. Uh, my name is Ruben Munez. Okay. Um, and how long have you been here? This is my second year. Okay. That's when I end in 2023. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, about myself or something? No. No, we're just, we're just looking for okay. name and how long, and, and, and you're, you are? Rachel Amoroso. Rachel Amoroso? Amoroso. Okay. And you are here as an alternate? Yes. Okay. And you're here, you live in Deltona, and you're here as an alternate. Thank yes. you. Welcome. Thank right. you. Okay. Dr. Pfeffer? Yeah. I'm, I'm a retired um, power plant engineer or designer. Or, um, okay. I've lived in Deltona since... 2016, and this is my second year. Second year. Okay. Thank you. And we'll go. We'll go back down to Susan. Okay. We're going to try to get that fixed at some point. Okay. Um, Mr. Alexander. Yes, Eric Alexander. Uh, resident since 1992. Um, Last was served as vice chair for the Economic Development Advisory Board, which is now defunct. Um, and um, I'm with, been a commercial real estate agent for 21 years in the area. And, and you're here as a regular member. And I am a member now as okay. of Monday night. Okay, thank and you. Miss, thank you to Miss okay. uh, Commissioner Bradford and Mayor Heidi. Okay. And Mr. Lee? Jody Lee. 
I've been, hi. I've been on the board for, don't stop laughing. I've been on the board for, oh, I think it's my second year. Second year. Second year on the board. Okay. And you're a regular member. I'm a regular member. All right. I was vice chair last meeting I was here, but I see there's. Well, we'll see what happens when you skip a meeting. I ain't figured this out. So right now they got an alternate as the vice chair. So how can it be an alternate be a vice chair? Uh, would you, uh, Madam Chair, sense. would you prefer I uh, go into that now or, no. or, or wait till staff comments? Let's wait till staff comments. Yes, ma'am. Let's get the um, business. Of, is there any public forum? Any public participation? Any pu no, I don't see a soul out there. Okay, so we'll go. There's no old business. We have one piece of new business, and that's comprehensive plan amendment on property rights element. And I will give that to you. Mr. Paradise to present. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair, members of the Planning and Zoning Board. Uh, during the 2021 legislative session, the state of Florida amended Chapter 163 Florida Statutes, which is the uh, growth management and planning legislation for the state that requires local governments to prepare, adopt, and otherwise maintain a comprehensive plan and the associated future land use map. Uh, during this legislative session, they passed uh, Florida Statutes 163.3. Uh, 1776i, which is the property rights element. And their intent was just to ensure that local governments, with regard to their planning decisions, were adhering to or balancing their land use decisions with private property rights, something that most local governments and the city, I can say this, the city of Deltona has always adhered to that balance between maintaining property rights and ensuring that there's sound planning going on within the city with regard to its land use program. This is a short element uh, known in the city's comp plan as a section, and it's section 11. It consists of a goal statement, one objective, and four policies that all just deal with property rights, kind of broad general statements that property owners have the right to sell their property, for example, uh, pretty straightforward. What you're seeing here is a template that was uh, uh, released or, or provided by the State of Florida Department of Economic Opportunity. And we kind of did some checking around. We've been seeing these amendments come through the Volusia Growth Management Commission process, and pretty much everybody here in the county, everybody being other local governments, is following the same format. Now, some of y'all may be asking, well, why, why are we advancing this? And the reason is that the, it is a mandate, and if a local government does not adopt the appropriate private property rights element, then the sanction is that local government cannot amend their comprehensive plan and f or future land use map. So that's kind of the, the compelling reason for a local government to, how shall I say, you know, take this short uh, element seriously with regard to adoption. I'd be happy to field any questions you all may have with regard to this initiative. Mr. Alexander? Um, yeah, Ron, I was wondering about it. When reading through this, I mean, first of all, why this wasn't already just, I thought this was kind of a gimme. Uh, it mentioned about uh, in the section 163, one, one, the right of a property owner to physically possess, control his or her interest in the property, including easements, leases, or mineral rights. How does that coincide with the easements with the city? Uh, I mean, that are already, I thought were, this doesn't have anything to do with utility easements no. and, or, or city easements? That no, the, it, it's based on that. An easement is a property right. 
and the city having an easement, for example, on a Deltona Lakes platted, platted lot is a right for the local government to put drainage on that right. six foot easement. It does not abridge those rights. Uh, it just merely recognizes them or maybe reinforces them. Does it give the property owner an option to, or an opportunity then to, to challenge that if uh, they don't uh, want their? I don't see how, how this would, would enhance or diminish their mm -hmm. ability to, to, to challenge that, that position. Thank you. Okay. Just Are there any other questions, Susan? No. Okay. Question? Yes. Um, a little confused here. On the Exhibit A, uh, Policy PPR 1-1.2, um, it means like you're responsible for the well uh, preserve of areas that may belong to the city, like railways or things like that. So if you're responsible for that, if something goes wrong with that, you're responsible as an owner, even though those are like somehow possession from the city, like set, set areas that are for the maintenance of the city. I don't know if I explain myself because I, I, I think Are, I are, I are you this. asking about the status of a right of way or a city dedication? It's like that, like railways or yeah, the, the, the local governments would still be responsible for those dedicated uh, right-of-ways and, and other areas. That's correct. And it's, it's, it's kind of like, okay, well, a developer comes in and does a subdivision, just say 20 houses, and puts a road to access those 20 houses. The trade-off between the developer giving up that facility the roadway and dedicating it to the public is that it provides access that is, is readily recognized by title company to ensure smooth real estate transactions. And it also the big thing is that there is the, the, the public at large is responsible for maintaining that facility into perpetuity. Mr. Alexander? It doesn't, uh, it doesn't distinguish between residential or commercial? It, no, it, it's, it, it's, it's, you know, just kind of just a, a broad brush, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay. And this is a new element? It, it is a new element or section, you know. Yeah, yeah. okay. And, and again, this is a state mandate. What, was there a time frame on this that we needed to have this done between certain, by certain time? The, there was no time frame other than the fact that we figured that it was better just to undertake this task sooner than later okay. before there was some demand to, to update or, or, or amend the city's comprehensive plan or future land use map. Okay. Uh, what you're seeing is, you know, I guess, you know, proactive planning. Oh, okay. <laughs> Ms. Burke? there's much we could do about this and in fact I commend the fact that they restate the law as it appears as opposed to adding any other language which then becomes ambiguous or open up for interpretation so since it's mandatory from the state and then we mirror the exact same language that's in the statute we pretty much as a city cover ourselves as far as meeting the obligations that we have okay. so this is pretty much pretty routine only question is the length of time it took to get here which probably seems, I thought was an unusual long time, but you know, I'm not involved in that process, but I think it's something that the city council should move forward with. Okay, do you wanna make that motion? Yes, I will move that we adopt or agree to the ordinance that's before us, which is? 06-2022. Yeah, then I'll ask our questions then. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought oh. everybody had. Well, we'll put a motion on the floor. We'll go back to questions. Let's okay. put a motion on the floor. Okay, I move that we adopt the ordinance 05, 02, 22. Uh, 06. No, that's not no, 06, 2022. I'm sorry. 06, I'm looking for my. 
and as, staff as recommended by the staff, the recommended approval. 06-2022, okay. Comprehensive Plan Amendment Property Rights Element. Okay. All right. Is there a second to that motion? Yes, a second. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Muniz. All right. There's a um, motion on the floor with a sec properly seconded. And now we'll go to some more comment. I'm sorry. Did you have something, Dr. Always. I know. I should know better, huh? <laughs> um, what is legally shall consider me? Legally shall consider. What it means is, is uh, I've often expressed it as a balance. Is when the local government implements a regulation, they have to take into account that individuals, individual property owners, do have property rights. So it isn't. It, there isn't a bright line there, but. You know, the, the consideration is, you know, we need to balance these sometimes competing interests. I mean, it, I don't see why it's, I, I don't understand why it's necessary. Other than some, so the legislature said you have to do it, but I mean, I, I want to, I'd like to know the reasoning. I, I don't have a lot of insight as to why. What's the matter with you, Ron? <laughs> uh, as to why the Florida legislature <laughs> yeah, I, I, again, I don't have a lot of insight as to what the so motivation we between, between the legislature was. Already, I mean, I thought this was a given that they already had these rights. They, they do, yeah. yeah. Essentially, just we're to, just co codifying the yes. rights. And we're reinforcing them. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Something Any other conversation up. or comments about this? If not, we'll take a roll call vote, please. Seeing anybody else want to talk before we do the roll call? Nope. Okay. Roll call vote, please. Member Alexander? Uh, yes. Yay. Yay. Member Burke? Yes. Member Munoz? Yay. Mem uh, Alternate Amoroso? Yes. <clears throat> Member Strozik? Yes. Secretary Pfeiffer? Yes. And Chair Norby? Here. I'm, I'm <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow. Apostles. Okay. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. So we'll go to staff comments and uh, th th Thank you, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, first of all, I'd like to welcome new alternate members and new members to the Planning and Zoning Board. On Monday, March uh, 21st, the City Commission appointed three new members and I believe four new alternates to uh, sit on the board. We really appreciate your all's participation in this process. Uh, also, uh, elections. Uh, we are going to be confronted, based on the, that appointment event, going to be confronted with, at the next meeting, having an election for a vice chair amongst the, the uh, regular membership. So just to give you a heads up, that's coming down. Uh, no, no, no. I'll talk about that in a minute. Okay. So, are you saying the next regular meeting or the next scheduled? The next meeting? scheduled meeting, which is next week. Yeah, which will be one week from today. Right. Okay. And uh, let me go ahead and and just get this out. I'm going to eat a little crow here. I apologize for all this this custom meeting schedule. We had another uh, item on this agenda plan for uh, quasi-judicial rezoning. Uh, I don't want to get you know talk a lot about the rezoning right now because it is, you know it is quasi-judicial, but we had a snafu with the advertising, okay, and and I, I take full responsibility for that. We wanted to salvage what advertising costs we had for this property rights element that you all just voted on. So it was determined that it was best just to ask you all to come out tonight and decide a recommendation on this. So like I said, so the city would not have to incur further advertising costs, okay? 
Also, with regard to the advertising snafu on this rezoning, we're kind of trying to move some of these projects along, of which we have many. And it was thought that we could continue the schedule that we had always represented to the applicant by requesting that the city commission, or excuse me, the, the city planning and zoning board come out again, volunteer their time on another evening within the same month. And again, I apologize for that. And I, I think we've talked to some of you all through emails and we appreciate your all's willingness to come out and hear that rezoning case, which again is quasi-judicial on the 30th, which is a week from today. Okay. Do you all have any questions about this interesting scheduling? Uh, and I'll, I'll make a pledge to you all to get back on the normal schedule here after that. Are you bringing lunch or dinner for that and a couple extra meetings? I'm just curious. I haven't, I haven't contemplated that, but that's probably maybe the least I could do. Well, well, Ron, if it makes you all feel any better, back when Deltona, we took the vote on Deltona Incorporation in 1994, was it? I think it was 94. It was not properly noticed. And we had to go, we had to hold hearings and go to the legislature to get a, a, a bill that would validate the results of the election. So, so that was a big deal. This is a little deal. We'll deal with this one. Yeah, it, it, well, we take due public notice very seriously. Yes, you have, we have to. to. You have and, to. And we, I, I can offer no excuse. And it's I'll just it's not a that. big, it's no big deal. Don't worry about it. You could okay. have a food truck. You already said it's your fault. You already said it's your fault. You don't get better. <laughs> so bring, bring the food truck for uh, Dr. Pfeffer next week. You, but you said it was your fault for the advertising snafu. Are you, uh, yeah. are, so that means you're going to pay the city back for the snafu, for the advertising mess up, saying it was your fault? Well, we haven't gotten to that point. We're, 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 they do have an application fee that can cover that. Okay. Well, we will, we will start down at this end, and if there's any committee comments, Susan, Eric? Not yet. Thank you very much. But I know you. You will have some soon. <laughs> Jody? Nope, none, but try not to have too many meetings on a Friday night. Y'all don't know I own a sports bar and... You know, I like to do certain things on Friday night. It's on the 30th, which is a Wednesday night. Oh, <clears throat> at, least, at least I won't have a hangover. I'm good. It's a Wednesday yeah. night. You're good. It's a Wednesday night. Okay. Wednesday night. Okay. All right. I guess I um, do have a question. <laughs> any questions, sir? Any, not questions. Any comments? Board com or board comments? Nope. Okay. Nope. Okay. Okay. You, uh, Mr. Lee has made a motion that we adjourn this meeting. And if there's a second, we'll... Uh, Okay, all in favor, let's well, let's do it. Okay, we're adjourned. Bada boom, bada bing. Boy. We do have reading material here for you all for continuing.